Foundation, Module 1. UHS, Modular Integrated Undergraduate Curriculum, Physiology. Medical Superfast Simplified Physiology. Video, Lecture Notes. Guyton and Hall 14. Edition Chapter Number 2. Lecture Number 7. Learning Objective. 1. Explain the structure of cell membrane. 2. Types of cell membrane proteins. 3. Functions of membrane proteins. 4. Define and enumerate the functions of cell glycocalyx. The structure of cell membrane. 1. The cell membrane, also called the plasma membrane. 2. 7.5 to 10 nanometer thick. 3. Its basic structure is a lipid bilayer. 4. It is thin, flexible, elastic structure. 5. It is composed of proteins and lipids. 6. Its composition is 55% proteins, 25% phospholipids, 13% cholesterol, 4% other lipids, and 3% carbohydrates. 7. Each layer only one molecule thick that is continuous over the entire surface. 8. Large globular proteins are scatter, spread, in lipid film. Nine. The basic lipid bilayer is composed of three main types of lipids, phospholipids, sphingolipids, and cholesterol. 10. Phospholipids are the most abundant, large amount cell membrane lipids. 11. One end of each phospholipid molecule is hydrophilic and soluble in water. 12. The other end is hydrophobic and soluble only in fats. 13. The phosphate end, PO4, of the phospholipid is hydrophilic, and the fatty acid portion is hydrophobic. The hydrophobic portions of the phospholipid molecules are repelled by water but are mutually attracted to one another. They have a natural tendency to attach to one another in the middle of the membrane. The hydrophilic phosphate portions then make the two surfaces of the complete cell membrane in contact with intracellular water on the inside of the membrane and extracellular water on the outside surface. The lipid layer in the middle of the membrane is impermeable to water-soluble substances such as ions, glucose, and urea. Fat-soluble substances such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and alcohol can penetrate this portion easily. Sphingolipids, derived from the sphingosine, also have hydrophobic and hydrophilic groups and are present in small amounts in the cell membranes, especially nerve cells. Note, keep in mind. Functions of sphingolipids in cell membranes. Protection from harmful environmental factors. Adhesion sites for extracellular proteins. Signal transmission. Cholesterol molecules in membranes are also lipids. Dissolved in the bilayer of the membrane. Cholesterol controls much of the fluidity of the membrane as well. Concept of fluidity of the membrane. Fluidity of the membrane is a term that describes how easily the molecules in a cell membrane can move and rearrange themselves. It depends on several factors, such as the temperature, the composition, and the presence of cholesterol in the membrane. Cholesterol is a type of lipid that is found in the cell membrane. It has different effects on the fluidity of the membrane depending on the temperature. At high temperature, cholesterol reduces the fluidity of the membrane by interacting with the phospholipid tails and making them more rigid and packed. This helps to prevent the membrane from becoming too fluid and leaky. At low temperatures, cholesterol increases the fluidity of the membrane by preventing the phospholipid tails from clustering together 
and forming stiff regions. This helps to prevent the membrane from becoming too rigid and brittle. Two, types of cell membrane proteins. Membrane proteins are proteins that are part of or interact with the membrane of a cell or an organelle. There are two types of cell membrane proteins, integral proteins, or transmembrane proteins, and peripheral proteins. Integral proteins that penetrate all the way through the membrane. Peripheral proteins that are attached only to one surface of the membrane. Functions of membrane proteins. They have various functions that are vital to the survival of cells and organisms, such as 1. Many of the integral proteins provide structural channels, or pores, through which water molecules and water-soluble substance can diffuse between the extracellular and intracellular fluids. 2. Act as carrier proteins for transporting substances. 3. Act as enzymes. 4. Act as antigens. Some proteins in the cell membrane act as antigens. 5. Act as pumps. There are certain proteins in the cell membrane which act as pumps and form active transport system of the cell. For example, sodium-potassium ATPase pump, potassium-hydrogen ATPase pump, and calcium pump. 6. Act as cell adhesion e.g. Cell adhesion molecules help cells stick to each other or to extracellular matrix, which is important for tissue formation, immune response, and wound healing. 7. Serve as receptors between the cell's internal and external environments, for example, membrane receptors bind to peptide hormones. This interaction causes conformational changes in the receptor protein. This process enzymatically activates the intracellular part of the protein in the cytoplasm that act as second messengers, relaying the signal from the extracellular part of the receptor to the interior of the cell. In this way, integral proteins carries information about the environment to the cell interior. Eight, peripheral protein molecules are often attached to integral proteins, function entirely as enzymes or as controllers of transport of substances through cell membrane pores. Four, define and enumerate the functions of cell glycocalyx. The entire outside surface of the cell has a loose carbohydrate coat called the glycocalyx. The carbohydrates always occurs in combination with proteins or lipids in the form of glycoprotein or glycolipids. Functions of cell glycocalyx. One, negative electrical charge that repels negatively charged objects. Two, the glycocalyx of some cells attaches to the glycocalyx of other cells. 3. Act as receptors for binding hormones such as insulin. 4. Some carbohydrate moieties enter into immune reactions. Keep in mind. Carbohydrate. Moieties are sugar chains that are attached to proteins or lipids on the surface of cells. Carbohydrate. Moieties are essential for the immunity, both innate and adaptive. They play an important role in the immune reaction by mediating, bring about, the recognition and binding of pathogen, antigen, and immune cells.